Hello and welcome back to I Fix It For You Repair Videos. We're going to try to bring this echo blower back to life. Looks like it's been setting up for years. I actually found this blower in a trash can. Believe it or not. I thought it'd make an interesting video just going over it, doing some troubleshooting, seeing if it's going to be able to be brought back to life and actually walk through that one with you on a video here show you some things that i'm looking for one thing i'm the first thing I, I did is i pulled the rope out of it and it feels like it's got pretty good compression we'll, we'll put a compression gauge on it here in a minute see what it's showing actually before i even start on this thing i'm gonna wash it really good i mean it's dirty and nasty there's grease all over it doesn't actually look like it's ever been cleaned so i'm gonna take it out here to the pressure washer I'm going to squirt some degreaser on it, and I'm going to wash it real good, let it dry. And so I'll get that done. I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, we're back here. We've got this blower washed up and cleaned up. We lost a couple little decals when we were washing it with the pressure washer, but they're not critical. It doesn't matter about the stickers. As long as it runs and blows leaves, that's all that we care about. Let's start with a, a compression test here and see what kind of compression we got on a little blower like this we would like to see at least a hundred on a compression test 130 140 would be great if, it, if it's around a hundred or a little less we probably won't fix it the compression test uh, shouldn't be the only factor in a go or a no-go i mean the overall condition of the blower if you got good compression and everything's loose on the bottom end and rattling uh, I wouldn't waste my time fixing it, but this echo feels pretty good. Now a shorter hose would be a, a better compression tester for this, but this is the only hose I have here with me at the moment. So we're going to do it on the long hose. Uh, you just have to pull it more times. Uh, it doesn't, if it's going to be the same reading, just going to require more pulls. So we're going to uh, start pulling it and we'll stop pulling it when the needle stops moving. Our needle has stopped moving about 1, 135 to 140, so that would be a pass. Okay, now we're going to do a, a spark test, which I've got this little tester here I use. Uh, you can take an old spark plug, and I'll show you here in just a minute. If you don't have a tester, I'll show you another way that you can do it. you got to have a good ground to do a spark test. The, the sparks jump in the ground, so if you don't have a ground, it's not going to work. You want to make sure the switch is open. Looks like we got a really good spark there. I'm gonna zoom in on this where you can see it and maybe dim this light. But we got really good spark. If you don't have a spark tester like that, you, you can take an old spark plug that you know is good, cut the end of the electrode off to where it has a, a gap to jump. Uh, it needs to, to jump almost a quarter inch gap. And of course it needs to go to ground. You gotta have it touching ground so I'm gonna hold it right there as long as you got the plug grounded good it will not shock you okay, and see I can see a fire jump in there again I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can hopefully see this spark and zoom back out we passed our compression test we, we passed our spark test we're gonna put this plug back in uh, if we if we fit, end up fixing this, we'll go with a new plug. But I'm just putting the old plug back in. The next test we're going to do is we're actually going to give it a little bit of a prime of fuel, maybe like a a teaspoon of fuel or less, because I pull it and pull it and pull it and it won't start. The primer, there's no fuel moving at all. The primer looks kind of rotten. The fuel lines look rotten here, so we know that that's probably bad. But I've got this little squirt bottle here that's got two cycle fuel in it. And so we're just going to just barely put a little bit. The choke's open, the throttle's open. Just a, just a little bit of fuel. You want to be careful because if you put too much, it can be dangerous. But the switch is on. Let's let's see if it'll pick that fuel up and burn it. It'll pick up.
up that fuel and burn it so we know we're dealing with something now that will run. But what we'll do now is pull this carburetor off and fuel line, clean out the carburetor, put new fuel line, new fuel filter, new primer. We'll see what happens then. Okay, here's our carburetor right here. Pull these lines off. Carburetor's still kind of nasty on the bottom where I messed it with the pressure washer. We're going to go wash it in uh, the parts washer there before we start tearing it down. Okay, you can see one of our fuel lines is is broken off. There, it bro I felt it broke since I'm pulling up on that. Okay, so we've got rotten fuel line there dirty fuel filter this little rubber grommet here is not any good it's it's the fuel is just deteriorating it so we're going to re replace all this stuff here new fuel line new grommet new fuel filter we're going to blow out this fuel tank here all right i'm going to go clean this carburetor up before, so we can tear it down and kit it and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, we got this carburetor washed up and cleaned up here. I'm gonna move the blower over there out of the way. I usually use a little white rag, clean rag, when I'm working on these carburetors. It just helps me parts in place, and plus I don't get anything dirty. Try to keep it all clean. These little carburetors are really sensitive. That diaphragm looks terrible. It's supposed to be real soft, but it's kind of stiff. This other side is the primer and the fuel pump. This carburetor actually has two sides to it. Your, your meter and carburetor side with the meter and diaphragm, needle and lever and pin. This other side here is the fuel pump side and the primer side. It looks like the problem with this carburetor is just the diaphragms and the primer. So that's probably all we'll put in it. Uh, the kit comes with some extra stuff, but we're just going to put in it what it needs. We're not going to make work or uh, do anything that's not necessary on this one. I've got another video where I go in a lot more detail on this carburetor. I'll put a link to that other video right up here in this corner. Uh, in that video, we go through this carburetor with a lot greater detail that we're not going to do in this video today. Today we're just going to try to keep it simple on this one. But this is your fuel pump diaphragm, your primer block, that's what's on this side. Like I say, the carburetor has two sides to it. Your fuel pump side, which pulls fuel from the gas tank and pushes it over in the meter inside, and this is what delivers it to the engine. So we're going to blow all this out, put new diaphragms in it, a new primer bulb, and we're going to go with that because the, uh, this uh, meter and lever and needle, it all looks fine. Uh, it's already got the right height adjusted, so we're, we're not even going to remove that on this carburetor. I am going to re replace this screen here. It's kind of like a little mini fuel filter that sits in the carburetor here. Uh, it's just a little screen there that catches more debris. Now this carburetor actually has some calibration screws. One of them's uh, underneath this plastic plug right here. Another one's down the center of the throttle barrel right here. We're not going to mess with those. There's no reason messing with them. The, the problem is the diaphragms are just bad and the primer's bad and the fuel line's bad. So we're going to do, we're going to correct the problem. We're not going to make work. And so most of the time, you know, if your problems are your diaphragms, there's no reason digging any deeper. Uh, you're just creating work, and there's also a, a chance of human error there where something doesn't get put back right. So we're going to fix the problem. We're just not going to create any new one. Uh, one thing I do like to do with these carburetors is I like to pour a little sea foam in that metering area and let it set while I'm, I'm going and gathering up my parts. It's just another level of, of cleaning. So we're going to set the carburetor just like that. And we're going to pour a little bit of sea foam right there. Sea foam. And we're going to let that set while I'm gathering up my stuff. Don't use any 
really high pressure directly on any of these holes. Uh, you can hear me blowing the, the carburetor off, but I'm, I'm just blowing it off. I'm not holding the nozzle right up to these holes. These are little bitty check valves. It's very fragile. You put an air nozzle up to that and blow it, and, and you just run it. Uh, same thing with this carburetor. There's actually a, a check nozzle right down in the bottom of this metering area, and so you don't want to damage that. It's okay to blow it off, but just don't put a lot of high pressure in those little bitty holes. But uh, these two diaphragms and this primer and this screen, you know, all those things right there are really our problem. And this fuel line, the fuel line that's uh, rotten. So I'm going to pause this a minute and go gather up my parts and I'll be right back. Okay, we've got our parts gathered up over here. I'll show you them in just a second. I'm going to blow this sea foam off this carburetor and anything that, that it might have broke loose. Slight air pressure on this carburetor. All right, we've got our carburetor kit, our fuel filter, our primer, a new air filter. I've got some fuel line here, our new little tank grommet. I like to keep my new carburetor parts away from my old ones so I don't get anything mixed up here. Like I say, if you want to see this in greater detail, look right up there in the corner. I'm going to put a link to a video. So our meter inside here, we're going to do the meter and gasket first. Meter and diaphragm second. And the plate that covers all that up. It's held on by two little screws here. Pull those down evenly, get them good and snug. The next thing is this uh, fuel pump side. We're going to put this little screen in there. This little filter screen that sits down in there. Just kind of walk it down in there with a screwdriver gently. I like to put a little bit of WD-40 before I put this fuel pump diaphragm down. It just keeps it wet uh, where it'll it'll function better until the fuel gets there then your gasket lays right on top of the diaphragm remember on this on the meter side the gasket went first then the diaphragm on the pump side the diaphragm goes first then the gasket uh, i like wd-40 on everything it's like that famous hot sauce it just goes good on everything uh, i don't remember the name of it but i'm sure somebody will tell me what it is uh, I don't think I should say the name if I knew it because somebody will probably want me to get hit with some kind of copyright thing. So, But anyway, it's got one screw that holds this primer block down over the fuel pump diaphragm and the fuel pump gasket. Snug that down a little bit more. Our new primer. Our primer cover. Four screws. It hold all that down. Screws down evenly. We don't want to tighten up one until we get all four of these screws pulled down evenly here. And tighten them up together. We don't want to get one of them too tight until they're all, all kind of snug. And then we'll, now we'll do the final little torque here. Pull them down good and even together. Alrighty, you can see that this carburetor has two nipples on it. Uh, one of them has a large barbs on it. That's going to be your main fuel line. That's the fuel line that goes in the tank. It's got a fuel filter on the end of it. Now this other uh, nipple with just one little barb on the end, that's the return line. When you press the primer, it pretty much pushes fuel back into the tank causing the main line to draw fuel from the tank. So let we can test this right quick. You can take just a piece of fuel line like this, stick it up on the main fuel line, stick this line down in a tank of good clean two cycle fuel, and just work that primer. You can see it pulling up fuel. I'm gonna turn it where you can see it here. All right, see it's the primer's pulling fuel now. 
So you can see that the primer works good. All right, we're ready to put the carburetor back on now and with our new fuel line. We've got our grommet right here. All right, I'm gonna move this stuff out of the way and bring this blower back over here where you can kind of see what I'm doing here. We're gonna go ahead and push this grommet back in the tank there. We're gonna go ahead and run our main fuel line down in this grommet. A little WD-40 will make this fuel line go through there a lot easier. Just we're just gonna get it started in like that. I use a pair of these to, a pair of forceps, I believe that's what they call them. And that's all the fuel line we need in there right there. We'll go ahead and push our fuel filter up on this line and shove it down in there. Make sure that fuel filter and that line get down in there nice and even, it's not tangled up. That way that fuel filter is just laying on the bottom of the tank there. I still got to put my vent and my return line in, but I'm going to mount this carburetor first and then we can put that in there. All right, we're gonna go ahead and hook this main fuel line up on that larger barb that I was showing you a while ago. All right, we have another piece of fuel line that's gonna be our return line. We're gonna put a little WD-40 on it. Push it down in the hole. We're gonna pull it through with the forceps like that. We're gonna hook it up to the return line there's our return line okay we're ready to put our vent line on there uh, this blower has a vent that comes up out of a line that's how the tank breathes sometimes you'll have a little vent in the gas cap this blower has a vent on the end of this line so we just want to push this line just down inside the grommet you don't want to push it in very far or the the fuel tank will push fuel back up this vent so we're going to put a little WD-40 on there and push that vent right down in the tank like that. Now this blower here has a little place for this vent to set a little notch there. Uh, we're going to put a zip tie around these lines just to also to help hold the vent. It just The factory doesn't do that, but it, it just looks a little neater. So now we're ready to put some fuel in. Good clean two cycle fuel. It's not over 30 or 40 days old. This stuff sets around. It evaporates and the fuel's just not any good after about 30 or 40 days. I'm gonna put the gas cap on it. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put our new air filter on it. We're gonna go ahead and hit this primer a few times. You can see that it's moving fuel real good. All right, so I'm ready to try to crank it now. Let's see, we'll see what happens here. Switch is on, choke's on. sounds really good I think that made a good blower here for somebody definitely worth fixing I think we spent about 25 or 30 dollars in parts there on it so it's made it a really good blower that, you know something that we found that somebody had thrown away and I uh, got a lot of life if you're driving down the street and you see an old blower in a trash can now you know how you can uh, fix it and bring it back to life but thank you for watching. Hope this video saves you some money. And have a great day. If you're wondering what the torque spec is on these screws, uh, it's a German torque spec. It's called Goodentock. We call this a seeping test. Uh, what that means is uh, we're going to see if it's any good on, on this video. 
if it turns out to be a good blower. Dad, nab it, dad gum it. <laughs>